In this video, we are going to prove this identity. Uh, there's various different versions of it. We're going to prove this particular version, as we will um, demonstrate in a future video. This is the one that seems to be easiest to remember when it's in this form. Um, in the first video in our series, we worked a little bit with the Kronecker Delta symbol. And in the other videos, we had some workouts with the mechanics of the uh, epsilon permutation symbol. Now we're going to consider what happens when we multiply two of them together. Remember from an earlier video, I think in video number two, we explained that for the epsilon permutation symbol, this is like the prototypical sequence and that assigns a value of one to it or any even permutation of one, two, and three. As you see here, uh, also endows it with a value of plus one. Any odd permutation of this sequence here, here, and here generates a value of negative one. Now it turns out that those same relationships also come, out, come about when you consider this matrix made with these different Kronecker deltas when we take the determinant of that matrix, it comes out to be equal to epsilon ijk. Now we won't uh, formally prove that, but we can certainly demonstrate it. Here we claim epsilon ijk is equal to the value of this determinant. So if i equals 1 and j equals 2, and k equals 3, then i is 1, giving us this row. j is 2 here, here, and here, giving us this row. k is 3, 3, 3, and 3, generating this row. And we see this is 1 because the indexes match. Mismatch indexes, so that's 0. Mix match indexes, so that's 0. So we have 1, 0, 0, that 0, that 0, that would be 1. So you have 0, 1, 0, and then that would be 0, that would be 0, that is 1. So it comes out like this, and indeed uh, that determinant has a value of 1. Now, let's just say that we, again, go back to our formula. And now we let i be equal to 2, j equal 1, and k equal to 3. So now we have 2, 2, 2, giving us this for the first row. j equals 1, so we have 1, 1, 1, generating this for the second row. k remains at 3, so we have 3, 3, 3 for the third row. And now that 0 mismatch indexes, that would be 1, that would be 0 with mismatch indexes, so 0, 1, 0. Here we have 1, 0, 0, and here 0, 0, 1, and for this uh, determinant, it has a value of negative 1. And as you see, that's the same results are consistent with what we said before. This is plus 1, this is minus 1. These other combinations will, in determinate form, give us the same results. Now it turns out that there's also some uh, symmetry here. Here's the determinant. We can transpose the uh, columns and the rows. Take this column and make a row with it. Same thing for this column, write it across as a row. Same thing for this column, write it across as a row. And if you plug numbers in for the i, j's, and k's, you see you get the same value. So there is a symmetry here. And in fact, based upon this property of the Kronecker Delta symbol, we can switch these indexes. That doesn't change the value of the Kronecker Delta symbol. So 
Here is our first formula. Here's the transpose of it. <clears throat> and then in each case, here we have it where we reversed the indexes. And we did the same thing here. So there's actually four different versions of the permutation symbol epsilon ijk written out in determinate form. Uh, we will work with this one in our present video. So what we have is this would be epsilon, the determinant of this matrix A would be epsilon ijk as we originally just demonstrated. Now for matrix B, the way that was obtained is take the first row, make a column with it, and then interchange the indexes. And that gives us the first column for matrix B. And then for the second column, take this row, make a column with it, and then replace the J with L. And reverse your reverse the indexes, the order of the indexes. Same thing here. Make a column. Reverse the order of the indexes and replace K with M and you get this. So for matrix A, its determinant is epsilon IJK. For matrix B, its determinant can be epsilon KLM. Now we want to know what happens when you multiply the two permutation symbols together. And remember, if we have two matrices, we can multiply them together. The determinant of this matrix times the determinant of this matrix is equal to the determinant of the multiplied matrix. And the determinant of our matrix A, that's epsilon ijk. The determinant of matrix B, that's epsilon ilm. So we multiply them together. That would be equal to the determinant of this matrix times this matrix. So first thing we have to do is multiply these two matrices together. So let's proceed with that. First we'll have going across this row and then down this column. So we'll have delta I1, delta 1I, as we have written right here. Then we'll have delta I2, delta 2I, written out here, plus delta I3, delta 3I, written right here. And notice now for these expressions, this is always 0 unless i equals 1, in which case that is 1, that is 1, 1 times 1 is 1. This is always 0 unless i equals 2, in which case this expression is 1. Same deal here, so 1 plus 1 plus 1 is 3. So we multiply the matrices together. The first entry in the first column is a 3. Now to get the second entry in the first column, we go across this row and the second row and down the first column. So now we have delta J1 times delta 1i. And that's what we have right here. Then we'll have delta J2, delta 2i written right here delta J3, delta 3i, written right here. So look what we have. We have delta Ji, 1i. So we have a J and an i with a 1 in between. Here we have a J and an i with a 2 in between. Here we have a J and an i with a 3 in between. So this can be written in condensed form as delta Jp, delta Pi, with this repeated index we sum over it, P equals 1, P equals 2, P equals 3. Or as we explained in the first video, 
multiplying two chronic or deltas together like this, we can contract the common index out, and that's just delta ji. So that is the second entry in the first column of our multiplied matrix. And then to get the third entry, it's going to be the third row multiplied down by that first column, where now instead of having J1, J2, J3, we have K1, K2, K3. So go through the same thing as we just did, and we'll get delta Ki. So the first row in our multiplied matrix will have this, or the first column will have this, that underneath it, and that underneath it. So there's the first column. Now to get the second column, we have to go back across the first row and down the second column. So now we will have delta I1, delta 1L, written right here. Then as we continue along, we will have delta I2, delta 2L, plus delta I3, delta 3L, written out right here. And again, we see the pattern. I and L with the 1 in between, I and L with the 2 in between, I and L with the 3 in between. We can write it like this. Delta IP, delta PL, sum over the P's. P is 1, P is 2, P is 3. We multiply these together. That contracts out. We have delta IL. And likewise, then, when we go across here and down here, that will give us delta JL. Go across here, go down here, that will give us delta KL. So these will be the second column. To get the third column, then Go across, go down, that gives us delta IM. Go across, go down, add them up, that gives us delta JM. Go across, go down, add them all up, that gives us delta KM. So the third column that we get when we multiply the two matrices together will be delta IM delta JM and then delta KM. That's the third column. That's the second column. And three here, here, that's the first column. So we're going to write out now the uh, multiplied matrix and see what kind of information we can get from that. So we multiply matrix A and matrix B together, and what we end up with is this matrix. First column, 3, then we had delta Ki. Let's make more room here. We have 3, then delta Ki, then we have that was Ji, then delta Ki, then we had delta IL, and delta JL, and delta KL. Then for the third column, it is delta IM, delta JM, delta KM. That's the matrix. We multiply matrix A and matrix B together. Now, what we said was that epsilon IJK times delta ILM will equal the determinant of matrix A times matrix B. 
Well, there's matrix A times matrix B. We want to take that determinant. So we'll write this as a determinant now, not as a matrix. So we have straight lines. And that determinant equals epsilon i, j, k, epsilon i, l, m. So what we have to do is expand this out with minors, and that can give us an expression then for these two permutation symbols multiplied together. And let's do that in the next video. This video is getting to be a little bit long. But again, the reason why it's like that is we got a matrix A and a matrix B. Multiply them together. The way determinants work is the determinant of this matrix multiplied by the determinant of that matrix is equal to the determinant of the matrices multiplied together. And the determinant of our first matrix A was this. The determinant of the second matrix B was this. We multiply them together, and the determinant of that multiplied matrix, which is this, is equal to then epsilon ijk times epsilon ilm. So come join us in the uh, second part of the video. We'll expand this out with minors and see what kind of an expression that gives us.